Lately, there's been a ton of news in the Salesforce world. Recently, their stock dropped about 20%, and just a few weeks before that, it was reported that Salesforce was actually trying to buy Informatica. And it's not crazy to imagine this, because if you're a big Salesforce customer, you know that the top initiative at Salesforce right now is data. Their sales team has been calling everyone to upsell them onto their data cloud product, and Mark Benioff's favorite topic is data cloud. So how did Salesforce get to this point where data platform and data became their most important initiative around the company? And as an enterprise, should you be investing in Salesforce as the core data platform of your company? So first, just some quick context on Salesforce. Salesforce actually started by pioneering the concept of SaaS. What I mean by SaaS is that when you go use a product like Salesforce today, you go to www.salesforce.com and you just use the product in your web browser instead of having to install software on your company's server and buy it with like a large one-time license from a software provider like Oracle. Before Salesforce, that was the main way to use software. Now, something that you probably know as a Salesforce customer is that Salesforce isn't just a sales CRM anymore. They have sales cloud, marketing cloud, service cloud, and dozens of products within each of those lines. Why does Salesforce do this? Well, the big reason is that they've realized that enterprises love bundling. They love the idea of buying this unified platform that solves every problem and it's kind of like a unicorn software suite that they can use across all their different teams and, and problems. Now, the ironic part is that small Salesforce offers a ton of solutions and products under a single vendor and a single brand. These products actually came to be through a number, and I mean literally dozens of technology acquisitions over the years. And because they were different tech acquisitions where they're buying pretty renowned companies like Tableau or Slack or Pardot or you know, Exact Target. These products are all separate products that have their own databases and don't really talk to each other. And that's the idea of Data Cloud. Data Cloud is a unified layer that connects all of your customer data across all these products since they're all separate products with separate databases today. So why does this actually matter? Why does Salesforce care so much about having a unified set of data across all of their products? Well, if you look at what's actually happening in the broader market, it's indisputable that data is becoming the new currency of business. Zooming up into customer engagement and customer experiences, which is actually the problem that Salesforce focuses on as a business, what's happening is data is actually the way that companies are gonna make those functions more effective. Let's look at some hard examples. In marketing, everything's about personalizing what you're sending to the customer based on everything you know about them to drive up efficacy of your marketing. In a sales or service context, everyone's trying to prioritize customers better based on their value or route them to the right person better based on what they're looking for. And when you think about it, all of these are fundamentally data problems. And then there's the other trend, which is AI. And everyone knows to have good AI, you have to have good data. The more customer data you have inside your platform, the more valuable you are, the more of a moat you have, and the more you can charge customers ultimately for getting data in, storing it, processing it, getting it out, you name it. So the question is, should you adopt Salesforce Data Cloud? I mean, the idea of having all of my business tools and all of my data in one system, if I could buy that right now, I'd, I would buy it at my company. But the reality is I've worked with multiple customers at this point that tried to use Salesforce Data Cloud or even Adobe's Customer 360 equivalent, Adobe Experience platform, and eventually abandoned the platforms. And customers always say the four same things for why these platforms won't work as a center of your customer data. So reason number one, these platforms aren't flexible enough from a data perspective to actually support super sophisticated personalization use cases. You know, Salesforce and Adobe and all these types of platforms are pretty good when your data fits a sort of standard schema. For example, when you're dealing with contact data or events about what users are doing on your website, like viewed a product, clicked a product, logged in, standard stuff like that. But as soon as you start breaking out of the norms, that's when it becomes a real hassle to start using all those kinds of custom objects and custom data points inside of your platforms like Adobe and Salesforce. What happens is you have to mold that data into their formats. And that really limits the type of personalization that you can drive in your marketing as well as other channels. Because you're looking at your business from the perspective of how Salesforce thinks of it, not all the actual data that you have about your business that's unique to you. Reason number two, it's way too expensive to store all your data inside of these platforms. It's kind of ridiculous. I recently chatted with a company that was trying to use Salesforce Data Cloud. All they wanted to do is get 
all of their transactions into Salesforce Data Cloud, as well as all their clickstream data, like what you know products are people viewing on the website, what pages are they going to, what marketing campaigns are they interacting with. And what happened was that when they actually looked at the effort required, the implementation time required, and just the sheer bill that they'd have to pay Salesforce for loading all of these details and data points into the data cloud product, it would be way too expensive to support this use case. And what's crazy about that is that they already had all of this data in their data warehouse for a fraction of the cost. Reason number three, you actually have to reboot your technology stacks to make use of these platforms. Every enterprise that I talk to first thinks, oh, Salesforce data cloud, Adobe experience platform. If I want to adopt these as my CDP, it's going to be super easy because I'm highly invested in Adobe and Salesforce products. And while it makes sense to think that way, it's frankly just not the reality of the situation. When you look into it, these Adobe products and Salesforce products are not connected together that well. Salesforce is forcing their customers to migrate between different systems left and right. Just a year ago, they actually just deleted the whole audience builder inside of Salesforce Marketing Cloud and told their customers that if they wanted an audience builder, they'd have to go buy data cloud adding to their Salesforce bill and creating more work. Another example of that is Adobe's Audience Manager, their original data product and audiencing tool from the DMP era, doesn't have any sort of integration point with Adobe Analytics or Adobe CDP. And what if you use products outside of the Salesforce or Adobe ecosystems? I mean, things like advertising solutions, there's so many different ad networks out there, or Iterable or Braze or Attentive. When you actually wanna integrate with these tools, the Salesforce answer is always the classic, oh, go use MuleSoft or go build custom APIs, which we all know no one wants to do and just costs more money and implementation time. A lot of this is because as a company, they're not really economically incentivized to promote the usage of other products. Again, they want to have all these different products, but under one Salesforce contract and umbrella. And the last reason that I would think about is that these data platforms are honestly just not that mature. While they cost a ton of money and they're positioned to the market as these premium products, they're actually quite underdeveloped compared to the problems that they've set out to solve. You'll see that there's a lot of things promised from the perspective of real time or the scalability they can handle or zero copy architectures that just aren't as true when you actually look under the hood and start using the products. If you look online, there's tons of concerns around the implementation time and effort that it requires to stand up these solutions. And if you've been a Salesforce customer, you'd certainly know that there's a gap between the time when something's announced at Dreamforce and when it's actually generally available for usage. What we're seeing across the market is that companies are realizing that they already have a lot of data inside of systems like their data warehouses or data lakes. Let's talk about two real world examples. PetSmart and Warner Music Group are two companies that are hugely invested in the Salesforce stack. They use Salesforce Marketing Cloud as well as other solutions across their companies. And they don't use Data Cloud, but they are achieving the dream internally of being able to use all their data as a business to drive really consistent, personalized experiences across all of their channels. And how are they doing that? Well, their general architecture is actually having a composable CDP solution like Hightouch sit directly on top of their internal data platform. So for PetSmart, that's Databricks as their main platform. And for Warner Music Group, that's Snowflake. But the exact platform doesn't actually even matter. PetSmart powers their whole loyalty initiative off of this architecture. In all the emails they're sending you saying, hey, check out this reward or check out this product that's really fit for you. Warner Music Group is doing something super similar. They have all this valuable data in there that's typically being used for analytics. But with the composable CDP architecture, their marketing team is actually able to use this data to power all the communications for all their thousands of artists globally that relate to the e-commerce and merchandise sales that they're actually trying to drive for these artists and for these labels. When it comes to actually trying to solve this problem of using data across your business and specifically using data to inform how you're interacting and engaging with your customers, that's where I don't think the architecture of trying to center all your data into a Salesforce or Adobe or any of those platforms is the right one. And the approach that you should be really looking into that all leading organizations are adopting these days is the approach of centering your business around a cloud data platform like Snowflake, Databricks, basically taking advantage of the existing data investments that your company has already made and will continue to make 
due to the importance of data on the enterprise and then equipping the business teams like marketing and other teams to use all that data for personalization across tools like Salesforce or even ad channels.